Follow-up is probably the most common reason we do most imaging studies in general. And in neuroradiology, especially at, at larger centers that, that have a lot of patients with cancer, it's very common to see follow-up uh, of patients with brain tumors that injure down Mars metastases. And oftentimes it can be somewhat tedious to look at the prior studies, find each of the lesions, measure them appropriately, and determine if there's any changes. So automated segmentation approaches are quite good. For the most part, it's affecting lesions, especially if they're you know greater than five millimeters. And by automatically segmenting them and tracking them across time, it definitely can help your workflow. You don't have to line up every image in the right plane. You can look at the segmentation, see that the lesions are lined up, and then quantitatively actually if there's a real change or not, rather than kind of subjective measurements or, or imprecise 2D measurements. And this is especially true if you're in a busy environment, which pretty much all radiology practices are these days. One of the main things that radiation oncologists do, they take the scans and they they manually draw all the lesions that they're planning on treating with radiation. It can be a very time consuming process. And in fact, you know, I've been in touch with our radiation oncology colleagues. Uh, even that the first thing that they ask if they can actually use the segmentations into their workflow. And so having the RT struct files allows them to import the segmentations directly into the workflow and saves them a lot of time in their process. So it's yeah, incredibly valuable for our radiation oncology colleagues. I think it's, you know, particularly helpful for the neuro-oncologist. Uh, radiologists often tend to have their own kind of style and how they report the lesions as far as the locations and, and just the style of, of, of the changes over time. So just having a, a really standardized reporting system with, you know, with images of the different lesions and measurements and precise changes over time, I think is going to be in particular really helpful for the neuro-oncologist. The one thing that you can have issues with injury rate reliability simply has to do with the fact that where generally you're measuring these lesions in a single axial plane, but the head can be tilted differently and it can really affect the measurements. So it's nice to have a 3D volumetric measurement volume, which is going to be much more accurate over time. In general, it's just to help with consistency. Complex cases, I think, so once you start to have, you know, more than 10 metastases, radiologists tend not to necessarily list all of them. And so by automatically listing all of them, you, you can more easily track all of them and be consistent across time. I think sometimes what's also challenging in, in measuring them is if you have, uh, you know, subtle, like infiltrative disease or treatment changes at the border of the enhancement is quite variable. And you might have different radiologists measuring that in different ways. But if you have an automated algorithm, even though it's very challenging to be precisely accurate on the borders, it should at least be consistent across time. So that can also help uh, deal with a reader variability.